I will be going shortly to the Shanti region to speak to our man Ibrahim Abubakar to give us an update, especially uh, when we are hearing that there's a one-week one uh, extension with regards to uh, the lockdown for Greater Accra and Greater Kumasi. Good morning, Ibrahim. Good morning, Etona. I trust you well. Um, we are managing by his grace okay. and I get locked down <laughs> we still have work. <laughs> great. Why are you located? It looks deserted. Um, I'm currently located at um, Asia. And this is Asia residential area, but it's not all that deserted. Uh, let me find everything. You see some couple of people okay. uh, in the background. Okay, but generally, are they observing the social distancing and staying home directive? Well, for now, we can say people are adhering to the compliance. You know, when we reported day one, day two, especially in this area, I was here for a couple of days. And people, the disregard for social distance was enormous. People were just coming out. After day three, when they are going to and now I can see a lot of people inside their heroes. So, um, all in all, we can get people who are outside lockdown or stay home. Here in Accra, we've done a couple of stories where hawkers, people who you know you can say feed from hand to mouth, people who hawk on the streets are you know calling on the president not to further extend you know, the lockdown, but it has been extended and there are concerns that how are we going to, you know, sell and feed ourselves. Do you get the same impression in the Shanti region? Exactly. Uh, this is, uh, if, um, this place is an economic hub and like you said, a number of the residents in Kumasi are the type that we say um, hand to mouth. They do daily jobs. So most of them were um, praying that the lockdown wouldn't be extended because, you know, it has affected economic activities a lot here. Even though it's a partial lockdown, but even when you move to the market centers to conduct your trading activities, people are not coming to buy it. But on the other hand, the president has taken this directive to protect all of us. So it's a two-way affair. Whilst people are complaining that um, this lockdown is affecting them, economically. They are also um, thanking the government because they know it's not deliberate. Like uh, the president said, these are not normal times. So uh, nobody will wish being at home without going out. But mm. that is the situation we find ourselves. So people have embraced it. They have nothing to do. Um, there are some are even ready if we have to lock down for a month or two. At least it will contain the spread of the virus. Because what will you stand to gain if you move out there just to go and find something to eat? Then you come back with the virus. The money wouldn't do anything to you. Because as it stands now, we don't even have medicine or vaccine for the virus. So for now, I'll say people are complying to it. And the one with extension, they have embraces okay so let's look at uh, a few interventions by government the the water access to free water for the next three months ha, ha, do you see people pay for water i mean these days i'm sure those who have their own tankers where you have to go and fetch do you see them paying for water well I've, in this area for example i've been to five water vendors that i know and all the places are full people are coming there to fetch water for free. So it's one thing I'll commend them. And those water vendors who source their water from Ghana Water Company are now selling it for free. But they tell me that interestingly, people who ordinarily come there to buy, let's say, three buckets of water for the whole day since the announcement, they will come there like five, ten times to fetch water because it's free. But we also have Another water vendors who source their water from Boho. As for those people, they have to and they are not paid for free. At the end of the day, they need electricity to form the water. So those people are selling it. But almost those who all those who source their water from Ghana water from this area 
are giving it down to Okay, so let's look at the electricity. Yesterday, President Ekufado announced that for the poorest of the poor, there's going to be 100%. It means that you don't have to pay between uh, for the next three months. And for those who can't afford it, 50%. Uh, what, 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 is the, what are people saying about that? Oh, people are excited because all along since the president announced um, the free water, people were also calling for free electricity. Because not everybody um, have access to water in their various homes, and some have to travel miles to search water. But for electricity, you know, everybody has access to electricity. So all along, people were calling for some intervention with regards to electricity. So yesterday, when the president announced it, and um, people were excited. This morning, I spoke to a couple of people, and they thanked the president very well. Um, I know some people were even saying the president did well by saying uh, for people who consume um, above the 50 kilowatts. Because, you know, as um, like I said with the water, people who do ordinary fetch uh, three buckets of water and now fetching to fetch more. Eight, <laughs> ten or five. So, Sometimes we abuse those things. So if there is a cap, at least you know you have to pay something. Mm. So you put the electricity. Okay. But all in all, people okay. are excited about this intervention because okay. everybody will benefit from it. Okay, so like, yesterday when I spoke to Evan Sinkum, uh, he spoke about the fact that there was this Ivorian who had just come into the Shanti region. We are told our borders are closed, so how he got into the country, we do not know. What's the updates with that young man? Well, um, we are yet to get any concrete updates. Yesterday, we followed up. We were told we will be briefly back. We still kept at the Kumasi South Hospital. Um, that is the situation. I also saw people who came from Tamale just on Monday, and I was asking them how they managed to move from Tamale to Kumasi. They wouldn't tell me, but... They have moved from Tamale to Kumasi as okay. this long term. So this means that um, we have some lapses at our barrier point checks in the border. So that's why the regional minister was saying um, they will ensure that whoever or whoever comes to the region is being checked and quarantined to uh, make sure that in case they have the virus, they do not spread. Absolutely. Ibrahim Abubakar, we're grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning. We know that you keep us updated as events unfold. Thank you so much this morning. Uh, thank you. Let me add, with regards to the market, uh, okay. you know, the commercial central market was shut okay. um, because the traders were flouting the social It's distancing. been opened now, we're told. Yes, it's been open. Okay. So we have two days ago people came there to register. So we have traders in three badges. Mm -hmm. Today, when this badge goes, the following day, this badge goes, and the following day, mm -hmm. the following month, we also have that badge. So mm -hmm. that is the, the situation. situation here. But there's one thing. It's so close. Yeah. Thank you so yes, much, uh, Ibrahim Abubakar, getting us updated with what is happening in the Shanti region. I'm excited about the electricity, but I think the concern really is that the cost, I, I, I know it must be a very difficult time to be president of any country, but there are concerns that uh, we shouldn't deplete our, our resources, coffees, yeah. on our resources just because we're trying to fight COVID-19. There was this um, analysis I was hearing from an analyst. I don't have the figure off head, but it says that if we are looking at this for free, that for free, this substitute. Mm. By the time we are done, if this is over, we'll be down to ground zero and won't be able to fund free SHS yeah. mm. and all other you know, projects. So mm. let's consider all these things. Well, 